This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe. Uh, Thursday, right around the market close. It actually hasn't quite closed yet, but I have to leave uh, the office early today. So uh, I'm going to get the video done for Friday morning. So um, I want to just uh, go into the S&P today and give you a uh, kind of what I'm seeing. I want to start with my multiple timeline timeline chart uh, and give you a little bit better idea of where I see this bigger picture now. Um, we've got obviously some issues. I mean, yesterday or Wednesday was a big up day, right? And then immediately, not even before you have your first cup of coffee, it's already at a new low in the futures markets the next day. I mean, this is kind of classic uh, bear market activity where you get big, strong updates and, and sometimes two or three and then immediately get a, a drop back to the downside. So we got to be careful here. Let's go ahead and get into um, the charts and I'll tell you what I'm looking for. So um, this is my multiple timeline chart. This is a daily chart with uh, 18 day and 18 week, 18 month in a quarterly 18 and a yearly 18. Okay, they're all color coded here, uh, but you can see off the bottom, this is the yearly line, quarterly line, monthly line, weekly and daily. Now, I, anyone new to the channel, uh, I, I talk about this on a semi-regular basis because it's so important to know where you are in each time frame. You can see last year, clearly in an uptrend. All these were rising um, and uh, we didn't have too much separation, especially early in the year. And then notice how this started to get separated here from this line. But you notice how every time we came down to the 18 week last year, this found support, 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 support. And then we failed right at the start of this year. Right. Here's here's the new year right here. So right at the start of the year, we fail and get through the line. Not only did we fail at the line, because you could consider these failures too. Not only did we fail at the line, we, we dropped enough that when we rallied back, the line rolled over. OK, this is really important because that that, tr that truly signifies failure. Failure at a line truly signifies that the line has switched from being a positive to a negative. OK, so now look at what happened the next time it tried to rally. It tried to get through, but this line was still declining. And the slope of this line is actually the important thing. OK, um, we got through the line, then we came right back and then we got slammed again. Now, on this last rally, we we uh, well, on the last decline, we broke the 18 month, but the line was still rising. So we got our little snap back to the line. And now look at what happened. We hit these two lines. See how the 18 week was crossing down through the 18 month. Um, and that happened actually just this week. So it was a little delayed, but you could see it taking place. And, you know, you don't necessarily I don't use that as a, as a, as a signal or anything. I, I like to look at the rally back towards these lines and seeing that this is a lot of resistance. There was price resistance and resistance from these lines. Now we've got a couple weeks left in the month. So this actually hasn't officially rolled over, but I think when we click into the next month into July, this line will be flat and or declining the 18 month. But more important to me is that because we came down and failed at the line and now have made a move. And if you notice now, look at where this line is and where this line is and price is here. OK, we're actually closer to the quarterly line than we are the uh, monthly line. And I think these act as magnets. OK, each one of these lines have kind of magnetic activity associated with them. So if if we come down like this, we haven't quite breached it enough. It's it tries to kind of pull it back and then uh, we get a failure and now we're moving down. And now you kind of have to assume that this is the target. I mean, I think we're heading down towards this thirty four hundred zone. I think that's where the next target is now. One of the things that I would tell you is if you notice, we, we busted through all of these lines back in 2020. Do you I mean, hopefully you see the difference between this and this. OK, this is price structure deterioration. OK, this is lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. This is just a straight down shot. This is a long liquidation flush. It just flushed to the downside. It's not really a shift in trend 
totally different. This is completely different than what happened here. Can't even, I wouldn't even consider them the same. Now, it's also not the same as some of these other tops that we've shown in the past. It's not exactly like 2008. It's not exactly like 2000. Um, each market has its own kind of characteristics associated with it. But one of the things that I'm looking for is volume. And look at the volume and how big the volume was on this decline. And it really started to expand when it was getting into a bottoming phase, right? Climatic activity. We haven't really had that yet. In fact, this volume is pretty light, relatively speaking, going back. I mean, look at the volume going back for the last, for this whole year. This is actually some of the lightest volume we've seen. We need a volume, we wanna make a bottom. We need a volume explosion, I think. That's where I am on this right now. And, and that would give us some insight because the sentiment already kind of gave us a signal here, negative 15%. Well, now it's back to negative 13% again. So it's still negative. But um, when we got in 2008, at the late in 2008, after the market had dropped, it got to negative 25%. So all I know is that I use that as a signal that when the market truly turns, if we get a real sign of reversal, um, on a daily chart, preferably now, because we, we have the break of the trend line and then we failed. So now we draw in a new trend line here. And now we have to go through the whole process again. We have to do a one, two, three. And if we do a one, two, three reversal on the daily chart, that should cause that should coincide with a break of the 18 week line. So these are the kinds of things that I think you want to be on the lookout for. Biggest thing is volume explosion. If we get a volume explosion, then you have an opportunity to maybe take advantage of a panic and do some buying, go in and dive in. Now, I would do it in the form of ETFs that you want to own, um, you know, maybe market ETFs or specific sector specific type uh, areas that you really want to own that, that are way overdone or something like that. But I don't know that I want to go diving into individual stocks right away. I'd like to, because, you know, that spike, most of the time when I'm interested in going into stocks, it's usually when we drop down, rally up, go to a new low, and the indicators like MACD do a higher low. And in fact, I want to spend a minute, and I'm going to go to our charts now, and I'm going to switch. So I've got the spider up, and I want to go back and show you something that I think is pretty important. So, um, and actually I'm on the wrong time frame. I wanna show you this on a weekly chart, okay? Cause we don't really wanna use the monthly chart for signals like this. These are, this is a little bit more sensitive signal that I'm looking for. So let's go back and look at this in 2000. And first of all, we'll go back to 2000, uh, and the, this drop here, this bear market that was in 2000 and a drop down to 2003, okay? I want you to look at MACD, okay? This is showing us, and what I've noticed taking place over the years is that you get this divergent pattern that takes place. And uh, you'll get a drop and then another drop here and you make a new low at that point, and this actually makes a higher bottom, okay? And then actually on a third down, you're making a slightly higher low, but this makes a significantly higher bottom. But I would still consider this to be really important after the drop that we had. Now, I do wanna make mention of this. You see this comparison here, this low to this low, and we made a new low here. So this was divergence. So you, you might have gotten caught in this as a reversal pattern, and it made a pretty good move, but then it went back through and gave this opposing setup, opposing signal, opposing trend setup back to the downside. So you have to watch the follow through. So you have a trading play back into resistance. Does it have follow through and does it turn things around and get the momentum switched or does it just go back up and do this and end up giving another sell signal? 
Okay, still a tradable move, a real tradable move. I mean, that was a pretty sizable uh, reversal. This time it moved up, came back down and tested. And then look at what happened. Green DI took over. We started to trend. We got this to move to the other side. I mean, this was not, this wasn't like this. This didn't set up as another sell signal. It went back and tested one more time and then turned up. So once this got up and the 18 crossed back above the 40, it never rotated back down. So, um, that's the difference there. But both of those were pretty good short to intermediate term signals. Now let's go to 2008. The only real divergence that we had um, was at the low. This was a big one. I mean, I, I remember this in real time. Uh, I sent out a list of stocks uh, to clients that were showing this same divergent pattern. And these things just, they had a huge turn, a uh, big reversal that took place. Uh, here. So um, obviously that would be awesome if we had that kind of divergence take place. Now this actually did, I guess you have to argue that this went to a lower low here and this made a higher low here, but this was so much earlier. This wasn't, this was where it was breaking down. It's a little bit different, but again, maybe you got caught up in that. And But, but look at how this was just a great sell signal. You rallied up to the two declining lines. I think this is a lot different than what we were looking at before because we haven't had any real drop yet. So what I want to see is something like this to develop. If we got that to develop, then you can start to look at individual stocks that are doing the same thing and you'll find some really great buying opportunities. But we don't have that. MACD is hitting a new low with the market. I mean, with the price of the uh, S and P. So as long as that's the case, we're so you go. So you just go down the line. You have one choice is climax. All right. Your second choice is divergence. Third choice is trend change. Okay. So if we break the downtrend line, we get a higher bottom when we turn back up. So you didn't have, let's say you don't have divergence off the low, but you come up, you break the downtrend line, you come back and test. Now you don't have climax, you don't have divergence, but you have trend change. Um, that's kind of rare in a bear market to not have one of the two, either a climax or divergence in place. You almost always make a major bottom off of climax or divergence. Now the area that we want to be watching is right here, that coincides with the quarterly MA line that I showed. This quarterly MA line coincides with kind of this breakout area. It's right around 33, 3400, something like that. Um, so that's what we wanna be watching for at this point. Uh, but big thing is, look at this volume. You can really see it on the spider. See the size of the volume bars? Look at it compared to now. It's not there. We don't have the kind of volume even the volume, look at this volume. Yeah, I would take this right now, a big volume spike relative to what we've had that was basically near that bottom. We had a puke amount for several weeks and then a big reversal bar in green that was way bigger than anything. We knew this was climatic activity. We undercut this low. So it's a little bit different. We don't have the same situation because this is more of lower highs and lower lows. But, um, but keep an eye out for climax volume expansion, keep an eye out for divergence, and keep an eye out of uh, for a trend change. And uh, we'll continue to talk about this on Fridays. All right. Have a good uh, weekend. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.